Good afternoon and welcome everybody to this afternoon's stream, which is really this morning stream, but it's this afternoon stream trying again because um, we had lots of all uh, all sorts of dilemmas and issues this morning, which hopefully we've rectified by pointing a camera at it rather than trying to use the uh, the actual computer to do the stream. The dates, yeah. <laughs> it was one of them today. So hope you're all well. We've so. got Linda, Deb, Tracy's gone to bed. Oh, night, Tracy. <laughs> you got Judith. And Afternoon, have I Judith. missed anyone? Deb. Uh, who else did you say, sorry? Linda and. Linda, Deb, and Judith. Judith. Ah, that's okay, I've done three. Set the night, Tracy, as well. So don't be afraid to say hi, ask any questions. So I'm going to be looking at the desktop version of Canvas on a PC. So hopefully you can all see my screen and the mouse. Yep. It's all wandering around. Wonderful. Um, so generally when you start up... Hi Wendy, nice of you to join us. Uh, when you first start up Canvas you have your Canvas project and craft pattern collection pop-up. Wait, loads. Give it a minute. Wait for it. Oh no. Oh, there we go. I thought it was going to start playing up then. I was about to throw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is where you can pull in, same as you can on any others, you can pull in any of your patterns and your designs. And you can put those into Canvas and you can make more of your design your projects. So, i.e., for the foil New Year's card. And you can take each of the bits in individually. If you really want to, they have a little video that shows you how to put it together. And there's also a PDF, which is your recipe, which puts it all, just gives you like a printout of how to do everything. Afternoon, Carol. Yeah, she's let me loose on my own with a PC. It's, yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Yeah, well, I hate PCs with vengeance, so there's no way I was going to do with a PC stream. So, <laughs> you can close that, and if any time you need to get it back, you can just click this button at the top here, and that will bring back your... So this one here pulls up your basic shapes. I'll pop it back to the top one, because you don't necessarily all have that one. So here you have all your basic shapes. You have your squares, rectangles, polygons, triangles, circles... All your other bits, wonderful shapes that you have on your machine, all good for your basic shapes. And if you want to insert a basic shape, just click on the basic shape. And when my Wait computer for catches it. up, there, there you we go. go. <laughs> it brings across. <laughs> so over on this side, you can see I have my layers panel open, which is the one, one from bottom. And you can see it's put me a square in on there. If I go to my properties, I can see that it's set to cut, and it's got no flat line on it, and it's got no fill. I just realised you haven't moved the mic. No, it's okay, I, they can hear me, I'm sure. Otherwise, I'd be saying they can't hear me. <laughs> I'm still speaking up, so it's okay. <laughs> you have your line width, you know, dash pattern if you want it, and you have some other tools which we'll come to a little bit later. In the next one down, this is your edit, and this tells you where it is on the mat and the size it's coming at. And it's got your resize if you want to do a percentage resize, so you can resize it by scale, which I went into the other day. Hi, Joan, and welcome. Your first time in. So, Joan if, Joan, if you're just joining us, uh, Ian's working on the PC version of Canvas Workspace, as in the downloaded version. So, if you need help installing and setting that up, then let us know. It does look quite a bit different to the web one, and it's more powerful. Okay, sorry. Finished? Yes. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to pick this shape up and move it into the middle a little bit. Now the reason I'm doing that is the next one is your rotate 
So where it says transform, I can flip it and flip it, which will make no difference to what you see on the screen because it's already square. So there's no point in showing you that just at the moment. Um, but you can also do your rotation in here. So if I want to rotate that, I don't know, 39 degrees for any particular reason, and it will move it 39 degrees. Then we should be able to see at least if I flip, mm, I don't know if it'll make a difference. There you go, if it makes a difference that way. And then you can see it flips around. And goes back to 39 degrees. And we can just change that with just a simple enter the project. Again, a bit further down, we've got some other bits that I will come to. Um, next one is offset. I'll just go through quickly. Now this gives you an idea of how you want, where you want your offset to go. So you have your spacing, which is set 0.2 of an inch. Put that up just a little bit so it goes I like half an inch. And I can decide which way it's going to go, so whether it goes inwards or outwards. We'll leave it outwards for now. What sort of corners I have on it, if I've round or beveled. And I can decide what I do with my original line. So I can pick from this, leave it as is. I can delete my original line if I'm making a matte layer, and I can also set it to draw. So depending on what I want to do. And this one's ticked at the bottom, so it's only going around the outside edge. If I have a shape that has inners, so like your lettering or your text, and you want it to do an, um, an offset on the inside as well, you can untick this box. As you can see there, it shows the inset on the inside of those boxes as well. But for this, as it's just a square, I'm going to press OK. Morning, Romain. Everybody missed this morning because it was just a, a shambles, so don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> the the I was going to say, the technology, it said no. <laughs> Repeatedly. <laughs> so I gave up. Um, the other one that you can see on my screen here is the weeding box. Now, this is only active if you have the uh, auto blade, or the vinyl auto blade um, set up, which is a premium function. It costs around £50 at the moment uh, from makers. Um, no doubt it'll come down eventually. I think somebody said it was on offer at the moment, but I don't know if that's still on. If it is, it's got £10 off, but they charge a £5 postage, so five pound off um, <laughs> but still it's five pound um, uh, you, you're a penny under the uh, free postage because it's 50 pound per free postage if it's something else you want you can save Pop a little nine. bit of money and do it that way you might save a little bit of money there but, but yeah it's there if you want to um, but it's only on the DX models that it activates different bits doesn't it supposedly but in canvas it doesn't make that much difference so it'll still activate within canvas so then we have on this side going back over here we have our borders so these again are the same as you have in your machine delightful borders we have the words so they're called logos on the machines i believe because they haven't changed it yet they have all the delightful logos pre-printed and then if you have the final auto blade you also get some extra bits that you can cut with your vinyl auto blade, which are very nice, some indigenous bits. And yep, remind of my to-do list. Mm. <laughs> I quite like the elephant. Do you? I do. I like the um, baubles. Mm. I want to do those big to go on the window. Apparently there's a shortage of laptops. Is there? Yeah. Oh. If you'd like a PC, I can build you one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, laptops you can't, but... I uh, can't build a laptop, but I can build you a PC if you want one. Um, so that's all those functions down there. Uh, it's just... Uh, I can delete that for now. Yeah, I'll delete that one as well. Don't mention that vinyl auto blade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'll source it for you, Remain. I'm sure they will. Probably why they've camped. If they've run out of stock, they've probably yeah. done it deliberately, but <laughs> I'll go in there. Anyway, so your next up button is our text tool. 
So we can type some text. Just for now. <laughs> yep, Sandra's going to be doing a window. Um, is that my my Christmas list must be as long as Santa's Christmas list? No, your to do list. <laughs> my to do list. My to do list. My to do list definitely feels as long as Santa's. Make <laughs> that a bit bigger. Um, so if you're in our, our group, um, I was saying earlier that I put a post up. Um, <laughs> good lad. Um, <laughs> it's amazing what a couple of phone calls can do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> morning, Christina, or afternoon. I was going to say afternoon. Because I was, I was doing morning early. Um, I put out a post yesterday regarding... Um, text. Text. Um, if you take somebody else's design, so Tracy very kindly sent me one of her designs to play with for a stream um, to make a video with, which I shall be doing later in the week. Um, and it used one of our fonts that we created. It used our child's play font. And I wanted to change some of the text at the bottom. And not thinking, I went to change the text. And it crashed a couple of times and threw me out and had a bit of a wobble. And I went, what the heck's going on here? And then I realised I hadn't installed the font. So if you don't have the font installed on your computer, and you're trying to edit some text from somebody else's file, it will, pat it will uh, throw you out. So. Sandra says she's having an issue with text, and that came up just as you started saying that. So every time that gets a bit of a weird, nanu 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 yeah. moment. <laughs> um, so yes, Sandra, let us know what issue you are having. Yep, by all means. Um, is the SDX nine hundred brand new inbox any good? Yes and no, Carol. It has the um, new um, roller system, so in that respect it's good. Downsides, it has a smaller screen than the 1200 or the 2200 and it does have a slightly reduced spec. Um, the big di biggest difference is the screen because it's actually smaller than the one you've got now. She's got a CM900 isn't she? Yeah. So you're going to notice a really big difference in your screen size. Um, it's actually smaller than a 300 screen. But uh, there's ways around that. You can send it to Canvas and work on Canvas instead if um, you're finding the screen size an issue. Um, there's a couple of other bits like um, PS files and other things that do vary and it's worth checking. There's a comparison chart on Brother, I think. And I think there may be one on ma makers as well mm, we that will um, go over the differences. But those are the the two main ones: is memory it's shapes. Scan was different as well, wasn't it? Wasn't it a lower? And I think oh, that, that's a good point. It may be a slightly lower scan, so check that too. Mm. Sorry, I thought what you said because the DX and the the older ones were better spec on the scanning than the newer ones, weren't they? Mm. I think, from what we checked. Yeah. Yes. So, um, ju just go and, go and find a comparison chart and just work your way through and just make sure you're happy with the spec before settling for the, the 900. Right, so, as I was saying, we're going to text and so, as you may or may not know, you can change your text font to anything you have on your machine. And on a PC, when it works, Wait for it. There we go. So it gives you recently used fonts at the top. Now with the PC it actually tells you where your fonts are from. So it actually separates your canvas font to your um, machine fonts. Or to the fonts that are on your laptop. So it actually separates them out for you. So you know roughly where you're looking for them. There they are. I will, before the end of the video, I will install Child's Play and Scripty onto this one so we can have a look at those as well. So people can see how we do those. That's all the fonts, and you can pick any of those that you want and find one that we like. I quite like that one. There we go. <laughs> Just because I was like. What's that one? Uh. You like that one? 
Yeah, I've quite like that. <laughs> if I was buying brand new box, I'd wait so I could afford the 2200. Yeah. Yeah, that was me saying that. All right, okay. Uh, only seven fonts too. There yeah. you go, so less fonts and stuff. Yeah, it's quite weird some of them. Um, so we can do that. So now a lot of people have the issue of if we want to type Merry Christmas above my design, okay, but when can add another text box underneath the box of peers, but can't see the rest of that. But when come to add another text box underneath, the box appears, but the words don't show. Ended up copying and pasting them, Mary, etc., and then editing it. So, can you draw another text box in? Another text box? I can. Let's see if we can replicate it. Hmm. Who knows? Perhaps it was just one of those random things, Sandra. Be interesting to see if you if you do it again, whether it would do the same thing. <laughs> I'm just seeing if it comes to a point where it won't let me put another one in. No, because even if you go over the top, it's. Not necessarily you, Sandra. It could just be that it was the software was just having an off day. I mean, um, really important thing to note for those of you on Macs, please, please, please do not update your computer at the moment. Yeah, for the new operating system of Big Sur. Because Canvas, in its wisdom, though they've been notified since June, doesn't have work. not done the update or have not updated their system so if you do the Bixer update you cannot use the text tool in Canvas. It just doesn't work. So bear that in mind. So that's text and I said I will before we go install the font quickly just so it's shown quickly how we do it on the PC. So can I clear all of those? Mm -hmm. My lovely work. <laughs> delete all those, don't need them. So, SVG, I can import a file. Yeah, uh, there are some issues with single line fonts not showing in Scan and Cut Except ours. Canvas. Except ours. Hey. But that was one of the first things we tested it in, wasn't it? We tested yeah. it in that before we tested it in like Word or anything. Bound to be lots on here. Uh, if you're importing text from, say, Pinterest, can you still edit it? Uh, no, the only way you could still edit text if um, you're downloading it from somewhere else is if it's a Canvas file, so as in the CWPRJ. Um, if it's already been converted to FCM, it doesn't keep the font information. Any idea when they might update Canvas for Big Sur? That is a jolly good question. The other thing that I would advise in terms of updating to Big Sur is if you have an older Mac, and by older I mean anything more than a couple of years, <laughs> if you have an older Mac, I would be really, really, really wary of updating it. And the reason I say that is we... When they had the last big update, we did the MacBook, didn't we? Mm. And it bricked the MacBook. It had to go to Apple, because luckily it was still under AppleCare. And they had to replace practically everything in it. So I would be really, really wary of updating if you haven't got some sort of cover for your MacBook or iMac. Download a single line for pinwheel. Hmm. Anyway, so that's a, an olive leaf that I've just uh, pulled in there. And Good old works. design bundles. Yeah. I recognise that one. Bundles. <laughs> I get my layers and you can see all the bits in the background, different colours, and I can select individual bits if I want to. There's lots of little tiny bits by the looks of it. Yeah. 
I, I usually go through and end up deleting all of those. Yeah, there's lots of little, little bits. And then you've got the main shape is that one. I think everything but that. You could delete. I could delete on that because I don't really need all of those bits. So let's go through. So just by holding shift and clicking, I can then take out the bits I don't really need. So as Ian's doing that, you can see he's also taking out the coloured areas. So if you wanted to, you could save the colours as a separate option for a layered vinyl. Um, or if you want to do some colouring with different pens, you could do it that way. But for the most part, you're probably going to want to take those areas out. Slithers. Yeah, because it goes between the lines. There. What I did when I was doing that particular file is I took out the colour and then I um, used the um, path tool to actually go in and put the colour in manually instead. Yeah. What could be a really simple file, to be honest. <laughs> Deb says that there's not much difference between cameras on PC than to Mac, apart from the speed. <laughs> um, the speed is only down to my computer. It's not down to the way cameras operate. It's purely down to the computer that I'm using. Because you're using it, my mum's laptop. <laughs> it's, it, it's getting on a bit, bless it. It's, it's, uh, Can you hear what you're saying, Mum? <laughs> it's a lovely laptop, but it's... Uh, it is a little slow. So, but there you go. So then we're left with just the two shapes and we can set those to draw and we can draw those and we can foil them and do some wonderful things with them, I'm sure. Um, which might be a bad idea. Set them to draw. I said set them to draw. Set them to draw. So if you want to set them to draw, the important thing to note is it always sets these as cut lines, regardless of how it comes into Canvas, if you send in an art, a file that is you've set up in another program with Draw, Afternoon Sally Ann, um, even when it gets into Canvas, it will reset everything to cut. Um, the only time it may not is if you've saved it as a CR. Go on, CRWPJ? CWPRJ. <laughs> Just think Canvas for the C. Project. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I still can't get it right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, save it as a canvas as oh, okay. well, then it will save it as you've set it, but that's the only time. I and mean, obviously when you export it as an FCM, it will remember when you take it to your machine if you set them to cut or draw. The main difference between the two used to be when you go to export the file. It still is. Still is, is yeah. it? I'm just going through for everybody in case okay, there's people who haven't seen them before, that's because that's like, we have new people, so that's fine. I'm doing everything. That's fine. <laughs> it's not fair, because I can't. <laughs> Bye. Uh, He's teasing me. But like I said, the, the PCs depend on your process and what you're running at the time, graphics cards, various other things in the background that may be slowing it down. You know, there's lots of things that slow down computers, and Macs just tend to be that like a little bit quicker. So Macs are generally better for your design software. They're design, they were designed for designers. Um, so, you know. My heads max are slightly quicker with design software, but you can, with the right knowledge, you can make a PC be just as efficient as you can the Mac. It's just knowing how to do it. It takes a little bit of money. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit of money. Yeah. Uh, but with yeah, inside knowledge and if you know what you're doing, it's fairly easy. Anyway, so that's that. So I'll get rid of those. So maybe put them in just to uh, demonstrate. Come here, you there we go. So, oh. Then we have our image tracing. So in here we can take a PNG and we can ask our computer to trace it. So let's go back to Dropbox. There's none in the SVG folder because it is an SVG folder. 
let's go into the PNG folder and let's see if we can do anything in there. So, I don't remember which one I picked, it was Olive's one by the look of it, so let's go for a different one. Let's go for one that's just black and white. Uh, let's go for Olive's 20 and open. This is going to try and trace the outline edge only. And you can see it's not a very grand job of that. Um, it's picked up bits of lines here, a little bit at the top here, and bits of lines all over the shop. So I'm going to take the number of colours. I'm going to try down first. Sometimes that works better than going up. In that one, it definitely worked better down. Yeah, and it's going again. Oh, she says. Almost. It has done better, but it's not. It's not quite got there. It's not quite got there, so let's go up instead then. Let's go up to 10. <laughs> that might get worse. So, what I would do with this one is I'll drop down here and we have the enhanced image tracing. Now, this Are you going to do areas gem? by colour first? Sorry? Do areas by colour first. Trace areas by colour? Yeah. Let's see if that makes a difference. Yeah. Works better on colour images, but yeah, you can do it on that one. Um, Sandra says, do they have to be PNG images for image tracing? No. They can be a JPEG. I, I, I must admit, I do prefer PNG as an image format and it was one of the things I really tried to push um, back when I was working in a design studio um, about saving everything to PNGs rather than JPEGs because JPEGs are lossy so when they compress they actually lose data whereas PNGs do not. Right. That actually has done not bad. It's picked up all the outside lines, it's picked up the inside lines. Ah, it's not done a bad job at all. No, so if you wanted to draw that as is, that'd be spot on. So if you're happy with that, you can go, okay, okie dokie. And then you can do enhanced in a minute. I'm <laughs> going to enhance because it's a nightmare. It's not a nightmare. It is, on, it is on this, yeah, it's quick on yours. <laughs> but slow on yours, yeah. yeah. So now I can resize that. So let me go into my properties. I'm going to do an aspect ratio on this one. And that's way too big. So I'm going to drop that down to 50. And there we go. Knowing that, noting that it was about 18. So Sandra says if she had a picture and wanted to follow the outline, that would be the way to do it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> It's a good way of doing it because it will give you the outside edge, um, and it's a, probably the better way of doing it, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And don't apologise for asking questions. We like questions. And Facebook especially likes it when you ask questions yeah. and comment. Uh, there you go. Drop that down to fifty percent. Fits nicely on my map now, and I could draw that, and it's all in perspective. So with enhanced image tracing you can actually do that um, process with much more complicated images. So if you've got a background paper that you want to foil you could do it that way. And, uh, I'm sure Ian will show you that to you maybe later in the week. Yeah, if I can get this running a bit smoother. Yeah. You are trying to give it a little bit of a boost, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing my best by doing other bits. So I'm just going to put in a basic shape for a moment, just to... It's running a bit quicker now, but... It's, and... I'm coming to this tool here. Now, this is my path tool. It's also the letter P if you're using shortcuts, if you're writing shortcuts down. Now, with the path tool, we can do any line. So we could draw our own square if we want to. 
it's quite a square, but yeah, it's near enough. Uh, like so. Or we can, if you want to keep it actually straight, you can use the shift key. And that way it will draw straight lines. So that then our square actually matches up. And we can also do a click and drag to make it a curved line. So we can click, click and hold, and then we can bend our line any way we want to. If you click again on the end, if you don't want it to be a closed path, and that makes it into a wiggly line. So. And then our last one at the bottom is our freehand tool, which means we can just squiggle and it will quite happily draw. So if you need some really fine detail and you've got a pencil or a graphics tablet and you're using a, a pen and you're very skilled at drawing, unlike me, as you can see, I turn into a circle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and this with an orbital mouse, so you know, I don't know. That, 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 that's quite a, a neat thing to do with that, with that isn't it? <laughs> it's a trackball mouse, so it's not the easiest. It's not the easiest thing to try and draw a circle with. But that's that one. If, when you've done your line, you think, oh, I don't quite like that bit, you can click on it. Let's get the right one. Let's pick up this line here twice. Just okay. <laughs> click again, click again. That's it. It will go. There, there we go. go. So you get all your nodes. Now there are hundreds of nodes in that line for some bizarre reason. So every one of these little dots is a junction point of your machine. So your machine will see this as next step of its journey. So if we go to our square, it should only have four nodes. Once more. Not on the corner. There we there go. You go. So it's got the four corners, and that's the four nodes. So that has its minimal amount of nodes. So you can move these around. So if you want to move that particular node, we can stretch it. And we can play with it, make a, a mini arrowhead. <laughs> we can make it a kite. <laughs> we feel that way inclined, and we can play and do all sorts of weird and wonderful things, or we can just put it back. And if you're ever not happy with anything, you have to undo at the top and just put everything back for you. <laughs> it's always good. Now, with my little wavy line down here, I'm going to leave that in for a second. I'm going to show you how you can shape your text to fit your wavy line. So, if you want text to look funky, and you think, oh, I'd really like that to curve like this line does at the bottom. If you hold shift and click, it highlights both of them. And then we go into our properties. It's cool down. Is it in properties? No, You're in the right one. In edit. I said just scroll down. <laughs> scroll down. It's close. There you go. And we can use our text to path tool. So fit to path as it's called under text. And our hello will go. Oh. Now you have a little X at the end here. You can move your hello about, and as Natalie once said, you can actually extend it off your line, off the one end, but only to the top of the H, so it'll only take it as far as your... Little plus letter. can go. Yeah, so your little plus can go on that line. So we can move it around. Sit up there for a minute. And then we can do lots of funky things if we go back into edit. Properties. No properties, then, I think. And we can centre it, we can change which end it sits to, we can extend it across the entire line. Which is also a funky effect to do as well. Mm, that actually looks quite cool. It's a roller coaster. Yep. And we can then adjust where it sits on the line, so it kind of sit in the middle. We can sit it underneath, and we can even change which way round it goes. So the path direction is useful for if you're trying to do things on closed shapes. Yeah, 
So if you have your text on a circle and you want it to look right underneath, then these are the ones to play with to get your path text going the right way. Isn't it? Yeah, and two circles. Yes. Draw a circle for each line of text that you wanted to swap directions. You can tell which bit of the book I wrote this morning. <laughs> You've been doing that today, have you? Yeah. So that's how you get your text to sit on a path. And if it's not our particular text or our particular font, you don't have to actually convert it to shapes, do you? No. Um, we thought you did, but you don't actually have to convert it to shapes for it to work. Um, obviously, because we our fonts that we've created, you don't have to do that. And then you still get your true single line font of ours. So again, making sure you can set it to cut or draw. So the other thing to note is if you set it to draw, it will only draw the text. It won't draw the blue line underneath. That is just where your text flows to. So this line underneath will not show when you draw your lines or where you draw your text. That's all those. Uh, other noteworthy bits, just over here, we have our artboard sizes we can change. Um, if you have the um, vinyl auto blade, you can use it for tiling, which gives you a custom size, which you can set to any size, and it will work out your tiling for you. Now, I won't go into that too much, because that's a, an entire another class. We have in here, we can set our inches or millimetres, so depending on what you prefer. Um, we can show rulers, and we have our grids and our snap to grid, and we can set our spacing on our map. So at the moment it's set to one inch. So each one of these squares matches the grids on your maps, and both directions, so you know they're one inch squares. <laughs> didn't it look like there was too many. <laughs> these things. So it is 12 by 12 and then you can use that to utilize your if you're doing lots of bits and lots of small bits and you want to do lots on one map rather than putting your going through your machine lots of times it's handy for counting your sizing so like I know this square needs to be four inches by four inches so I cut a piece of card four and a bit by four and a bit and it put it on my note fit within my Card. So in my hello, when it was, if I click off the hello, I can see it fits in one, two, three wide by three by three square easily. So that would easily fit, and I could put a piece of card on three by three, and it would cut within that square. Yes. Are you okay with that? Mhm. Mm How am I doing? Yeah, not too bad. I was going to give you a little challenge to do. Why? Thinking about what Sandra said, would you like to show how to do foiling onto the edge of, an sh of a shape using offset? No. <laughs> Why? Maybe for another day. Okay. Yes. Another day. I won't take very long. <laughs> Go on. Oh. <laughs> I'll go and do my font installation next. Well, sorry, I've interrupted your flow. Again. Again. Do your font installation. Go on. You don't have to say sorry, Sandra, it's all right. <laughs> so, I'm going to find a font on my machine quickly just to install one or two, maybe. I might do them both. So they're on Dropbox, and I know where they're hidden because they're in the DT folder. Has its uses. <laughs> it does. <laughs> so into my DT phone, you can see all the things that they get to play with. So I have child's play, and I can do 
was scripty as well, wasn't it? Yeah. I'll do that one first. Mm -hmm. So just double click on it. And there you go, so it comes up. It tells you what's in it, so we've got all the little letters, lowercase, capitals, numbers, punctuation, all the other bits. So we just go install. That one's done. Wait for me little wheel to stop worrying. There we go. So we can close that one. And then I'm going to do script as well. Is that the right one? Yeah? I've got everything. Yep, V2, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're going to install that one too. Now the important thing to note is you have to restart Canvas. So I've installed both those fonts. Close that. Now we have to close Canvas. I don't want to save anything information. I have to excuse the screen because that's our uh, reopen Canvas. Do a tap dance. Yeah, just don't fall in the sink. <sighs> Write a novel. <laughs> and hello to our Twitch viewer as well. You can see we have somebody watching on Twitch. Hello. I can't see your comments unfortunately because we have the uh, restream chat turned off at the moment. Turned off. Uh, yes, most common mistake, installing fonts and then wondering why they're not there. And it's because you need to restart your software. Yep. And in case anybody hasn't seen this warning, here is the warning about the big sir. Because <laughs> I haven't taken it off purposely because I know it pops up. It has been there since October. So, you know, um, just be wary of that. But it does say that the text adding function doesn't work in the new Mac OS. So now if I put some... Mind you haven't seen it, I don't really much fancy it. <laughs> so going back to my text, if I put in... Hello world. Let's make that a bit bigger so when I make this into my font it's readable. So now when I go into here, and then if I scroll down, so we have our CHCHCHCH child's play, there it is. So that's our one single line form, which isn't going through the single line form. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't come up. The, that's interesting. It doesn't come up the same way on the PC. No. Hmm. I wonder if Scripty does. Hmm. So I'm going to try another box and I'm going to put a different font in here. I'm going to put our other Scripty one in. Um, Yet it writes it as a single line font. That's different, that's weird. Now that's the same font. Did you do convert to shape just on that no. one? No. So those are the same fonts. So the other one I wanted to look at was um, that's weird. Um, the scripty. So I'm going to go all the way down to S. Oh, that's just a glitch in the program, but it's an, a weird one to be aware of. So pick that one. See that one works at least a single line font. So that still comes through a single line. 
He's just obviously having an off day. I hope that's why. What did you do? He's brought it through his bowl rather than bringing it through a single line. Ah, that'd be why. But he doesn't give it the option to put it a single line. Hmm. No. Do it as regular and sort of sort it out. Yeah, I was going to say it's only the normal. So, there's our, our two fonts that we've installed. stuck in my head. That doesn't make sense, Sonia. What's that? You should explain that you can put S in there. Hang on, what 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 we bought there? What when? S Oh yeah, on the drop down for the font. Oh, for the font to <laughs> scroll down. Yeah. Uh, okay, because I scroll down rather than just going. Yeah, that's just me. <laughs> I'm still typing between sessions. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sally, that, that they didn't make a lot of sense. Then, okay. So that's that one. So, creating an outline to foil. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen like that. Okay. So let's bring in a. No, oh, I didn't want that one. My computer's having a. How would you tell it? So it says you can bring in a PNG, a JPEG, a GIF, or a bitmap. Going back into our, let's try something that isn't. Just going to say, just do, do a, a like a basic shape and how to use offset, so you can do like a foiled border. That's what I was thinking. I think. Um, let's do that one because that's got a nice. As I was trying to give it set, and so it was nice and simple. He was trying to overcomplicate it. Mm. <laughs> Let's pick that one up really well. Just to be awkward. Connector. Connect. Yep. But that if we one. wanted to do the edge by colours, let's see if it will do that inside line as well. There we go, so that's picked that up really quite well. So therefore you can use that as to do the bits here. What I would do when that comes through into canvas is take out all these little dots and little bits um, just for the sake that you don't really want those little dots and bits coming up. Um, so it's only where it's picked up specs in the background. So we can take that into canvas. It's going to be huge again because it comes in at 18 inches. Size this by percentage. Just to bring 
it down so it fits. There we go. That's that brings it in so it fits nicely on our page. Like I said, I would have a look at all these little bits and dots because the last thing you want are all those. But if you wanted to foil just a particular part, I would have a look at some of this and see if you can find your basic shape that's underneath. If it's brought it in, or if it's brought it in pieces. Isn't that lovely of it? It is. It's delightful of it. It's brought it all in in little pieces. She so listened to Natalie and just on the books. <laughs> <laughs> but we went through and sorted of one out, didn't we? Because we you spent quite a while doing it. And basically what you can do is then you go through and you just find all your lines here. And I would set them all to... Draw. draw and then you could foil that first and then you could either draw or cut these bits out so they sat over the top but it'd be a case of finding all the bits and just literally going through it's a painstakingly slow process yes um, but that's one way you could do it so you can get it to so trace all the outside lines so I mean, if we turn off that image we can see there we've actually just got the black outlines so it might make it a bit easier to find all these bits but those are the bits you want it to foil and then maybe draw these bits in with different pens so you could do that and if you want to make a map for that particular project you could just do an offset around the outside couldn't you it wouldn't work quite so much on that it wouldn't work try. because it would offset everything yeah so it, you'd end up with lots, lots of blobs bits yes well, you could weld it and then it would. I'd group it first before you yeah, do it's anything. Grouped, I think. Is it? Okay. A... I've only just flicked back, so yeah, yeah it's, it's all grouped. grouped at the top, so. Okay. Um, so do a, a rectangle around the outside and then show offset. Yeah. So, what is it? No, do a square strip rectangle. So let me just lock. So I can still see it. How do you go and put the square in the group? <laughs> it's certainly let you know who's boss today, isn't it? <laughs> it's playing me up today. Right. Taking me square out of my group and I'm going to make that a bit bigger so it goes around me my shape um, I could do with moving it all into the middle a little bit space to do an offset around the outside because I don't, I don't. And what I will do while it's there is I'll just align that centre and centre. That's in the middle so I've got a nice box around my shape. And then my map layer. Bring them down to offset. Around. An offset box around off shape. Offset box around the outside. Oh dear, come on. <laughs> so hopefully that helps Andrew. 
Are there any other questions before we disappear for the day? If you do want to purchase our fonts, they are available on um, Buy Me A Coffee. Um, and you can get both of them off there. They are £6 each. So you have the Charles Play one and the Scripty one. And they're both available from Buy Me A Coffee, which is our support page. So if you do want to support us a little bit, you can get them from there. Okay, Sandy, that's fine. <laughs> if there are any questions, if there's uh, any other questions, if there aren't any other questions, I should say. That's all right, Linda. It's always good to go back and... Have a refresher. How did you turn off the picture? Okay, so in the layers panel at the side, which is the one from bottom, if you go back into the original group where it all came in, the very last thing it puts right at the bottom is the image. And you can turn it you on literally off. just turn it on and off by clicking the little box. You've got two boxes. One is your lock which locks it in place and the one is the visibility and the visibility is the one that turns the image on and off so you don't have to see it so that's right down the bottom here and if you don't want it there you can delete it because it won't send to your machine anyway so once you're finished with it you can highlight it and just delete it and then that'll get rid of that initial image it won't make any difference to your actual what's on your screen apart from you'll lose the colored image from the back so depending on if you want to keep it there or delete it, but note it won't send to your scan and cut because it can't send images across to your computer, to your machine. Likewise, if you do hide anything, that doesn't get sent either. So even if it's a shape or some text, if it's hidden, it won't go. So that's how you can get around things like colouring with different pens, um, yep. foiling or embossing. Yeah, so I, what I would say to that is once you've done all these bits in here that you want to foil, set them as one set, group them as foil, and then turn off everything else. And that way you have just your foiling to do first, and then you can do your colouring after. It's always good to do it that way. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's been helpful to everybody. If anybody does have any issues or wants help after the stream, you can message either myself as Ian Ballard or Natalie as Natalie Ballard, or you can message the page or the group. Uh, the page is Planacraft, and the group I can never remember because it's too long. Scanning, cut and papercraft, courses, classes and workshops by <laughs> Planacraft. See, I told you it was too long. Um, that does come up at the end of the stream, so if you don't have a chance to write it down, it does pop up at the end. Um, so you can have a look at that one. Or just go to the community page on our Facebook page and you can find it on there. Is there any way to move from one selection to the next as on the CM900 thing? So in other words, if you're doing like the two arrows, it goes round the... Um, the only way to sort of filter through is by using these at the side in your layers panel so you can flick through um, these individually and then that will select the individual bits so your layers panel in canvas is your friend it's the best part of canvas they ever invented um, is this particular layers panel um, it allows you to lock certain bits you can delete bits if you don't want them it's a good way of getting to bits you don't think you can see. Um, if you have everything locked and there's something on your Mac that you can't get to, it's brilliant for getting to that little particular bit that you can't quite see. Um, so use your layers panel here at the side as your friend. Um, personally, I think it's one of the best parts of 
canvas they brought out. Um, it allows you to do so much more with your designs. Um, and even if we take out this group, going back to the top, wrong way, back to the top. Come on. If for some reason I wanted to get to the lower shape and I couldn't get to it, so like here it's quite hard to get to that bottom shape. If you use your panel at the side, it makes it a lot easier to get to that particular panel. And then when your arrows come up, then you know you're moving the right, and then sometimes it still clicks off. So if you find that you're clicking on it and it still clicks onto the other one, which it probably will do from now to then, the best way is to lock the panel you don't want to move. So if you don't want that top panel to move, click on it, and that way you can't move that other panel. Doesn't matter what you do, you won't be able to select this panel until you unlock it. Once you unlock it, then you'll be able to move it again and select it. But that again is such a, a, made, you know, a function, so useful. Um, we were doing a, a brief design, weren't we? Mm -hmm. And by putting a circle in the middle, locking that circle, you could then place every piece exactly as you wanted it without know knowing that that circle in the middle was not going to move. And it was brilliant because you knew you could get it just where you wanted it without that circle. And then you just deleted the circle at the end and your reef was perfect. That's okay. Uh, if there's no other questions, I'll uh, call that a day. Uh, thank you all very much. I will be back tomorrow with another PC-based uh, exploration. Hopefully we have better success than we have, Yes, better success than we had this morning. This morning and we'll, we'll leave it probably set up like this, to be honest, and we'll just set it up so it runs with a camera on it, because that works better. Oh, the export I was going to show very quickly. If you did want to export your design... What do you uh, mean if? Of course you're going to want to export. When you want to export your design. Then, and you can use either file or export, or you can use control and E for the shortcut. And it tells you that anything that's locked becomes unlocked when you send it to your machine. So even if it's locked, it won't show. If it's hidden, it won't send. So we can click OK. Now on the PC you have export FCM, so if you're saving it to a USB memory stick or to your computer, you can export it as an FCM file if you want to send it to somebody else. If you want to transfer it to your machine via the internet, so that's what most people do if you have a 900, 700, 800 or any of the SDX models, um, certainly in the UK you can just patch that through. And your last one is to transfer the file to your scanning code via a USB cable. So what that actually means is a printer cable rather than a USB cable, because it doesn't work off a USB. <laughs> um, so your printer cable has a squarish peg end um, and a USB the other end. Um, and it's the old printer cables that they used to be before printers were wireless. Um, yes? Mm-hmm. And you can have that connected between your machine and your um, scan and cut your laptop or computer and you can send it that way and that sends it direct to your machine rather than saving it to your computer but that only comes up on the PC version it doesn't come up on the Mac version for some reason it's very really odd so again I'll cancel that because I don't need to send that to my machine um, thank you all very much Hopefully you've enjoyed that and it's been helpful. Like we said again, if you do have any questions or need any help, you can ask for myself, Natalie, or the group. Um, please join our group. It's a very helpful group. Um, there's lots of people in there that can help. Um, and if they don't know, then we usually answer within... A few hours. A few hours, usually, yeah. As soon as we see it, we'll answer. So. Yeah, it doesn't always tell us, which is useful. No. 
stay safe and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Bye!